What's up everybody and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. Uh, 24 hours after the Royal Rumble last night and we have a lot of things to talk about really. And I'm probably going to save this one for the end, but I can give you a hint of who it will be. I don't know if you know who that is, but <laughs> I'm sure maybe a lot of you will know. Not the best shirt I got, but hey, um, I'm sure you'll know. But 24 hours after the Royal Rumble, and we kicked it off with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, which they were in Laredo, Texas, and we got what a horrible crowd this was tonight. The dead is a motherfucker. They were not reacting for anything, barely. But Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens came out and celebra celebrated that he defeated Roman Reigns and Jericho lasted longer than anyone in the Royal Rumble and that he's the 61 minute man Owens thanked Jericho for his support and they the greatest Royal Rumble performer of all time except 4 hours 56 minutes and 12 seconds the amount of time I spent or whatever in the Royal Rumble match as he puts it but yeah 61 minute he's the 61 minute man of the year and tweet hashtags about it which actually worked and yes, he, he was in that shark cage and everything, but Kevin Owens says, I am still the champion, I'm still the man, I am the one that beat Roman Reigns. Braun Strowman then came out, which, um, he came up, he came out there and he told Owens, like, the real reason why you're champion is because of me. And he says, um, Owens says he's about to thank you and everything, which there was a little thank you Strowman chance, but... Strowman says, I did not come out here, I, can, I just can't stand Roman Reigns, and he said, you promised me a title shot. And Owen says, I don't know what you're talking about, you didn't qualify for nothing, you're not getting a title shot. Strowman Freeman says he had proof and there was footage after he retained at the Rumble, Strowman says he wanted, he will get a title shot now. And he pretty much said, Owen, he needs to give him shots now, he will break him in half. Until Mick Foley came out. And whatever weird crazy suit he's wearing this week, my god, I'd rather see Cactus Jack regular Mick Foley. But, um, he came out there, and he says, yes, there's a championship opportunity for him. So, a title shot, which it should be called, but Owen says, you know, he didn't want to do it and everything. But, he said, you will fight tonight for the championship. So, he, yeah, you will fight. Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Uh, next thing you know, Chris Jericho went into one on one with Sami Zayn. And. Yeah, uh, pretty much uh, it was a pretty good match, I'll say that. Even though the crowd, once again, still kind of quiet. They looked like they kind of got into the match a little. Sami Zayn with the Haluva kick beat Chris Jericho, so. I know they'll get a title shot for the U.S. title since Jericho is technically the U.S. champion right now. Cesaro and Sheamus were arguing backstage until um, Bailey came up and told them to hug and just to work out their problems and stuff. So they all hugged until Charlotte and the club showed up, which Duke Gals wants to call everybody. It's the new thing now. Ben and Charlotte pretty much called them failures. Uh, Stephanie was on the phone in the back saying it's set. Kevin Owens did not want to do this. He did not want to do this title match. He said, I did this the night before. And he said he's been trying to live up to Triple H's ex expectations, but he's saying that uh, he's hurt right now. And Stephanie says that she had no idea Foley even made this match. And she said she would talk to Foley. And, you know, after this whole Rollins business and everything. So after they do that. I guess she's going to try to stop the match it or whatever, so, and you know, another thing, uh, before I kind of get on this night, it took them a long time to do this, but they waited two hours, really, to, to tell who won the Royal Rumble, and that once if they even mention Randy Orton winning the Rumble, and yes, he is a SmackDown guy, I understand that, but when you win the Royal Rumble, you get to technically, that's somebody to choose the champion you want to go against. So that should have been the first thing of the night of Randy Orton saying he won the Royal Rumble. Now, I'm not saying he's going to come out there because he's on SmackDown, but at least mention it because 
that's what that's the show he's on. He's on SmackDown. Well, uh, he's the Royal Rumble winner. I shouldn't just say SmackDown. He won the Rumble. So he somebody ought to say something by now. He waited two hours to do that for some reason. Tony Nese when he gets some stuff by Lee. Crowd once again still gives no fucks. Tony Nese won with me. Mustafa Ali got his thing last week, then he got his thing this week. Austin Aries interviewed him then, saying, talking about you have this, you have no charisma, this clearance or whatever, your critics, and you have the washboard apps, but, so he talked to her actual washboard, and he pretty much said that Aries, you know, he said, I don't answer questions to my critics, which, I don't know what the seg point of that segment was or anything, unless Austin Aries just come back to beat up Tony Nese, I don't know, but, he pretty much put it on like that, and Nice did get a win for once, because he usually jobs everybody on Raw or that 205 show. But he got something out there. Seth Rollins came out there, and he talked about having an NXT last Saturday, and he called out Triple H, but once again, they had this whole face thing with Stephanie McMahon. Got no reaction when she came out there. And once again, everybody's thinking that she's going to come out and emasculate him like she emasculated every other guy on the roster. Now the women, too. But she pretty much called him a disappointment. And he pretty much said that's, that's what she does with her husband every night, being a disappointment. And she said Triple H wasn't here. And Rollins said, I don't, doesn't care what Stephanie has to say. Why don't you let, get, let your husband off the leash? That he's a coward. And Stephanie pretty much said, um, Hunter's afraid what he might do to you, Rollins, and that, you know, that's why he's staying at home. Rollins didn't buy it, he pretty much was pissed, saying that, you know, he was the face of the company and everything, but, you know, I lost the match and I wasn't in the rumble, so now I'm coming after him, and that Stephanie, I, well, she's not going to apologize, or even wanted Hunter to apologize at Triple H, but um, Rollins pretty much said, you know, you know, for the last two months I exposed your husband for the gutless snake he is, I went to his house. I went to NXT. And, you know, you have the security guards do all the dirty work. Because Triple H is a scared dude. That's what he is. And now he said he's the greatest threat in his legacy now. And Ron Zimmons Ron said, you know, the fans know it also. And Stephanie Green was pissed and said, she, I, you disgust me. And Stephanie was about to walk away. Then, about to walk away. She pretty much says, you know what, Triple H will be here tonight. Because Rollins said, you know, <laughs> no, showing it because he pretty much wanted to say, you know, showing up uh, for NXT is bad business. Why not show up at the headquarters, huh? Why not show up at the headquarters and we'll see how this goes. I will, uh, you know, I'll make your life a living hell. But she said Triple H is on his way to the arena, so we gotta wait for Triple H to come later on tonight. Bailey, Cesaro, and Sheamus went against the club in Charlotte. Six person tag is whatever. I, I, I don't know, uh, but it was a bad botch out there with Cesaro and um, Gallows. Kind of did a bad fall, if you ask me. Um, I don't know what he did, but I'm kind of kind of fell pretty much hard on the ground, it looked like. But it was just a basic six-person tag. Wasn't much to say about it. Bailey won with the Bailey belly. Once again, pinning Charlotte clean. And a six person tag, he said, or just six, whatever, six person tag, and that's even six man, six woman tag. So, so it, the, the match was what it was, got the win, whatever, belly to belly. So it, was, it wasn't much to say for me. Which is still funny that she lost last night, but you know, you can pin the champion clean the next night on Raw just because. I, I find that kind of ridiculous sometimes. Uh, Stephanie and Man question Nick Foley booking the match tonight for the Universal Championship. And, you know, he understands that she's the uh, commissioner and whatever, but I am the GM and it's my job to do something. And Foley going to pitch the match and everything. He's going to give a high five, but Stephanie just looked and he walked away after that. Neville came out to um, talk about he was the king of the cruiserweights, even though no one. Listen, I don't know what part of Texas to, uh, Laredo is, but holy shit, like I said in the beginning of this show, nobody reacted to nothing tonight. No one gave a crap what was going on tonight. Neville pretty much came out and said, I'm the king of the cruiserweights. None of you fans ever supported me. Rich Swan came out. He says, no one's out to get you or anything. And he says, he respected him and everything. And, went up there and he was going to shake his hand. But Neville, Neville pretty much put the title belt down. And 
that's when swans come to get it. He says, you, you don't, so you can't offer your hand to a king. You bend the knee and bow. Which, um, Swan pretty much was about to leave with Neville so you don't turn your back on a king. As Swan pretty much went after Neville again and took him out and started kicking him. And threw him out, pretty much fought him outside the ring with more punches. And held up, and then Swan held the cruiserweight title as Neville pretty much was backing off from there. Which actually wasn't that bad of a segment. Like I said, again, crowd just does not care. So... He pretty much says he, he, is a, he is the king of the cruiserweights right now. And he has the title, the crown, as he calls it. Um, Randy Orton. Well, they finally, like I said, they, they finally spoke about Randy Orton. Uh, Sasha was getting ready for a match tonight. Which her hair is more purple or now darker. Uh, to go against Nia Jax. But Bailey pretty much questioned her and everything. Why don't you wait till he needs to fully recover? But Sasha says she has something to prove. Unlike some people that come up short. Which some people think Sasha went very heel right there. Very, very heelish in a way. Kevin Owens was still talking to Chris Jericho. And then one thing I did also know is that uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were wearing uh, Quebec armbands. I know it was a tragedy down there today. Uh, an attack on a thing of the church. I'm not going to speak on that that much. But I know they were no, wearing those armbands. I mean, that's just, you know, a um, short statement out there in their memory. I just know it was a tragedy today down there. Kevin Owens talked about how he has to face Strowman, and Jericho said he has his back and everything, so they were making sure that was going to happen. Kevin Owens came out, Chris Jericho's on ringside of the table, but next thing you know, Braun Strowman came, comes out, and beats the living crap out of Chris Jericho, throws him, and puts him through a table, so now Jericho is gone from the match. Which, Kevin Owens was mostly running from Braun Strowman, I don't know why we're having this match if he's all taped up, as Mostly Kevin, I'll say it's about Braun Strowman. Most of the time of this match was him throwing him outside the ring and doing these running charges on him until he get the turnbuckle and Kevin Owens did a cannonball and did a pretty much a, a well, pretty much a front flip somersault or whatever and multiple sin times and a super kick. But from and he's about to do a, he did a frog splash. And he's about to go to the top again, but Kevin, but um. Strowman pretty much got a power slam on him. And after that, Roman Reigns, folks, which then once again, they barely mentioned anything of him taking out The Undertaker, too. They, they probably said one thing about him taking out The Undertaker. And, you know, let me say how silly, say how silly this is. They said Roman Reigns had, has had an incredible 24 hours. Incredible 24 hours, what? What, he lost the title, he lost the, the match last night for the title. And then he came out at number 30, eliminated Undertaker, and still lost the Royal Rumble match. They barely m mentioned anything. Then Roman Reigns pretty much came out here, killed everybody. He took out Braun Strowman, multiple Superman punches, and speared him to the ground. And then he speared Kevin Owens, and Strowman was up. I don't know, I guess they're going to have a match at Fastlane, or the Rumble, or something. But listen, we knew Reigns was probably going to come out of the way just in the scoop. Braun Strowman out the Rumble instead of doing this whole illogical thing and okay I'm not going to attack Strowman at the Rumble but I'm going to take out the Undertaker and say some stuff so most likely they'll get a match at Fastlane no one gives a fuck with this Roman Reigns thing which the people will still boo and I've already spoken enough about the Royal Rumble you can check out in my review that went on for a while especially regarding the whole Roman Reigns situation so you can check that out Brock Lesnar which will be seen more frequently him and Paul Heyman talked once once again Paul Heyman, you know puts on a great promo. Can't never doubt it really. And as people chant Suplex City, he talked about the beast and he talked about how people chanted Goldberg and he went on the Yeah but he said yeah but a lot. And talked about how Andre was undefeated until for fifteen years, so Hulk Hogan beat him at WrestleMania three. How Ronda Rousey was beating everyone's ass in UFC, but was sm her face smashing in Holly Holm made her make it worse since Amanda Nunes beat the shit out of her. And that Undertaker streak was defeated at WrestleMania by Lesnar. Kurt Angle going into the Hall of Fame. But you can say Angle, but you know, says Lesnar, and that even Paul Heyman says his, his kids. You know, so he's the advocate of Brock Lesnar. He said, yeah, but go with B in about a minute and 26 seconds. And he says, yeah, he said, yeah, but a lot, like I said before. Yeah, but 
Yeah, but he's eradicated. Yeah, but this. Yeah, but that. The record button. But we need a challenge for the final time, he said. And they offered the challenge to Goldberg at WrestleMania, which they pointed at the sign. And, you know, the odds in favor for Goldberg, you know, stand over his vanquished victim, victim. But he says, he has, he offers Goldberg. Yeah, but, and dropped the mic and left. So once again, great promo, it's whatever, but I just really don't even want to see Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania now at this point. Okay, Survivor Series is one thing. I guess he was hurt, and maybe that's why that match went on. But come on, Royal Rumble was just fucking ridiculous. Okay, listen, we ever, I get it. He, he pretty much bitched Brock Lesnar two times. Like, he, he bitched him. He made him look like a bitch. It's no point in that. The second time was just ridiculous, though. And what, well, and you know, and all these rumors are now going that um, he's gonna Goldberg's gonna be Kevin Owens for the Universal Title, and then he's gonna defend the title against Brock Lesnar. Look, what is it? What are you gonna do with that? Was it gonna be another squash match at WrestleMania, or was Brock gonna kill him at WrestleMania? And then again, why do we even need to see a third match? I'm I'm just done. I'm really kind of done off this thing, and just don't care that much anymore. That has just gotten ridiculous. I liked it at first. But then again, I knew the match was, gonna, was kind of going to fail, so I was the match was like the WCW-style squash match. But holy crap, it took two moves to take out Brock Lesnar. What the hell was that? Somebody tell me. But you can check more on that Royal Rumble in my review. Nia Jax went against Sasha Banks, which she pretty much destroyed her knee mostly throughout the whole match into a submission. Listen, I don't know. I think it's too late for this thing. But now they got Bailey involved. So we don't know who rang the bell then. Bailey came out for the save. So I guess all three of them are going to be in this now. So we're going to leave Charlotte for the title. But I don't know. But the, the women's division is just... It's weird sometimes. So what if Nia Jax going to go for the title now? Is Sasha going to betray Bailey and go heel? What, what, what's what's going to be the deal with that? I, I don't really know what's going on from there. And then they help um, you know, Bailey and her trainer help Sasha to the doctors pretty much, the training room. After her knee was destroyed, which I know we didn't get this a long time ago. Um, handsome Rusev came out with Jinder Mahal as Lana wants to call it, even though he's wearing a mask. I don't know if they're taking a shot at Cody Rhodes or anything, but it's like dashing Cody Rhodes, handsome Rusev. Wearing the mask like Cody Rhodes, both were just no name for that because Cody was more grotesque as they called it. The whole um, wearing the mask thing, but I, I'm not saying we're just gonna put brown paper bags on people's heads. Enzo and Cass came out, did their thing, and talked about uh, you know Jinder Mahal's veins, uh, the walking steroid right there, as people would say, steroids Mahal, but um, it's gotten some walking wellness test, but it was a tornado tag match between Enzo and Cass versus um, Rusev and Mahal. Enzo and Cass picked up the win with the rocket launcher. Not much to say from the six person tag, so it wasn't a lot. Just, it was just, it just happened. Uh, Limo arrived, Triple H came out. Triple H came out then, you know, the COO, and he pretty much said that he, you know, brought Seth Rollins up on the obscure, he made him a star. He was the first ever NXT champion. He led the Shield. And then he put him by his side. He was the face of the WWE, WWE champion, everything he ever wanted in his business. But Rollins never held up to his bargain, though, after he was hurt and faded into obscurity. And when he, you know, talking about Rollins in motion, he had to hand over the title to him. But, and everybody thought the world wouldn't turn. When Seth was gone, but it did. It did turn. And you come back saying that you're going to get everything back, but it, do it doesn't go like that. And Rollins took no responsibility for it. He's supposed to come out here and apologize. He says, I gave you the world, Seth. You spit in my face. He gave you everything. And then you, what happened to you? And now you think you could just come back and take, you take it all back? And you want to call me out? He says, well, this is the when it's the right time, it's the right time. Because when he puts on the suit, he's there to create. He's there, he's there to NXT. He, that's his thing, that's his creation. So he didn't give a damn of what happens with that. Because, you know, he's trying not to be the guy that ends careers or 
crush dreams, injure people, destroy them. I'm here to create NXT. I'm here to create the next Seth freaking Rollins, as he calls it. And I'm done trying. And, you know, if you want to go, let's go. You you say you're in my, you want to go to my house? Well, I'm right here. Which, people really started chanting for Triple H that he was damn near a face out there talking in this promo. Which was a really great promo. I can't go against that. But the fans were in the chant Triple H when he came out there. When he took off the jacket, fans chanted Triple H, Triple H. So he, he was done trying. He told Seth Rollins to come out there. Because I'm standing right here. And you'll know who the creator is. Come meet the destroyer. As Rollins came out then, holy shit. I wish this could have been a better crowd. But Samoa freaking Joe came out there. Samoa Joe, NXT, whatever. He attacked. Seth Rollins, which there were some fans that chanted holy shit, and I even heard a fan at least chant TNA, but Hunter Freeman put his jacket on, looked at Seth Rollins on the ground, and he threw him in, Joe threw him in the ring, his fan chanted, Joe is gonna kill you, Joe is gonna kill you, he threw, he threw Seth into the, tur into the turnbuckle, pretty much in with that insecurity thing, he looks around, his uh, Seth Rollins tried to fight back at Samoa Joe, but Samoa Joe pretty much uh, hit him with the cocaine clutch and locked him in there, and that pretty much ended the show. So, great, great promo from Triple H, you know, he pretty much came off like the biggest face in the world, you know, because the fans chanted for him. Samoa Joe, I, I, you know, maybe this is the casual crowd, and they don't know who the fuck Samoa Joe is. There's only like a handful of people, but you think people would be a little bit more excited. Then again, this crowd was not excited throughout the whole night anyway. They were dead as hell out there. So, I mean, it's hard to even speak on for, for what happened, because mostly throughout this whole night, Raw was really boring, too. I, I fell asleep, you know, on one part. I was just getting tired for some reason, and I just, like, is this show, how much time we had in this show left? Really, so at least we got to see the debut of Samoa Joe. I'm sure people are going to wish he was on SmackDown and that Raw for several different reasons, but I'm um, not going to get into that. So, there, there were some things that happened, but the crowd was just, just dead. But Samoa Joe is here. What does that mean now? Well, I don't want Samoa Joe to become another guy because they're still setting up Triple H versus. Seth Rollins at WrestleMania most likely, unless some old joke goes against Seth Rollins at Fastlane or maybe on Raw or something like that. So I don't know. I don't know. Some old joke is like the like a hired hitman now, or I don't know NXT bodyguard for Triple H. So we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, Joe since he got out of NXT now and made his Monday Night Raw debut and and stuff since he's not fighting for the title anymore against Nakamura. Uh, you know, Rude probably lose the champion right now, but um, that, that, that's that's um, what we get right now. Joe made his debut tonight, and we'll see what happens from there. Like I said, I just wish this crowd could have been a little bit more lively because it would get as fuck, like I said before. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. I'll check out my Royal Rumble review and live reactions, and what I'll be right now also. So I'm out of here, and peace. Joe is gonna kill you.